This is Surfing Through Cinema. I'm your host, Hawaii Harry. Today, I will be discussing the next film for Disney Week. Now, this film is all about the life of a young deer from the day he was born all the way until he's a grown buck. This is the story of Bambi. Alright, so some technical aspects of Bambi. So this film has three Academy Award nominations. One is for Best Sound, one is for Best Original Song, and one is for Best Score. That was at the 1943 Academy Awards. And during this time was a pretty difficult and hard one for the industry because World War II was going on, the economy just recovered from the Great Depression, and so to top it off, there was also a writer strike. So Disney was really struggling financially and was really banking on Bambi being their saving grace. You know, throughout the whole production of it, they were experiencing um, you know, staff cuts, wage cuts. They even fa faced uh, bankruptcy multiple times. So this was kind of like Disney's last ditch effort to make money during this time. And unfortunately, it wasn't the financial success that they were expecting. And so they had to hold off on major feature film productions until later in the 1950s with Cinderella. Another technical aspect. So a lot of the animated scenes from this movie, in particular those of the deer drawings or of leaves or backgrounds, have been used in multiple Disney films. This film has been used the most of any. So for example, Bambi's mom, she's in Beauty and the Beast, The Jungle Book, The Sword and the Stone, and The Rescuers. A lot of aspects from this movie have been used. Probably because of how varied of a style it was, great design. Maybe because the animators spent a lot of time creating the characters in it, that it wouldn't make sense to spend all that effort again. No one's really sure why they did that. But that just goes to show the, uh, the beauty and the real artwork that Bambi is. So, let's get into the plot of it. A young deer, his name is Bambi, he's born, and he is to be the prince of the forest, just like his father is. So he makes some friends along the way with Thumper and with Flower. And they kind of just have these little misadventures together, you know, throughout the forest. Um, like Thumper teaches Bambi how to ice skate. They, uh, they have all these fun adventures together. So after he makes connection with all these friends, it's winter time. So he has to spend more time with his mom. And you, you really learn to appreciate their relationship. Bambi's mom is killed. It's kind of tragic for him. He's really, really sad. And then his father, the prince of the forest, takes him in and trains him to be a better buck. So then a few years later, Bambi's kind of full grown now. They're warned by the owl about being Twitter pated. <laughs> so that they're gonna fall in love and eventually leave each other and not have to rely on each other anymore. And they all thought that was, oh, that, no, that's not gonna happen to us. But then one by one, each of them finds a female and they leave the group. So, Flower, he finds female skunk, and they're together. And Thumper finds a female rabbit, and then they're together. And then Bambi finds his old friend Pauline, who he was really embarrassed of when he was younger, and he starts to fall in love with her. And so, as he's chasing her around, you know, kind of playfully, he has to fight off another deer for her affection. This one is, this guy is more aggressive and more evil. So Bambi fights him and ends up being triumphant in the end and wins over Pauline. There's a fire that happens in the, uh, the forest. So Bambi has to go around making sure everybody's safe and getting them out of the fire. And he eventually saves Pauline, who is trapped. And as a result of this, he's kind of seen as a hero and the torch of him being the prince of the forest is passed to him. They symbolize this in the end where Bambi and his dad are both on top of a cliffside 
And uh, Bambi's dad, you know, looks at him, then turns away and walks away, leaving Bambi to be the one who's watching over the forest. And that was kind of a beautiful shot and beautiful ending to it. I'm going to go on a break real quick, but first, here's a message from our sponsor. This podcast is brought to you by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Here's how. It's totally free. There are tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your computer and even your cell phone. But that's not all. Anchor distributes your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. You could even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Anchor is everything you need to make a complete podcast all in one small place. So go on and download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. So we're back from our break. Now I'm going to discuss some critical reviews and then my personal views about Bambi. So Rotten Tomatoes gives Bambi a 90% claiming that it has beautiful art form, but also has kind of a dark tone to it, and they're both intertwined beautifully. Um, And, um, you know, researching this, I found a lot of people praise the film, so there's very few critics who really don't like the movie, which is is good, I guess. (laughs) So it was kind of hard to find critical reviews of it, but the one I did find on IMDb it was a user, um, they discussed how they thought it was too sappy at some parts and then kind of bland and boring with the rest of it. Like they didn't know what to do with the characters, what, didn't know what to do with the, uh, with the dialogue. It felt it was kind of flat and kind of a boring film. And there are a few YouTubers who also say that as well, how it's not Disney's best film and it's not really that exciting of a movie. Which, interestingly enough, though, it, Walt Disney himself is quoted as saying this was his favorite film he ever worked on. So, it seems that the people who like Bambi really only like it for the heart of it, and not necessarily for the story or the characters, which many critics of it find to be very weak. So, speaking of, let's get into my um, opinions of it. I personally love the, the art and the design of it. I think it's well done. You could definitely tell they put a lot of effort into it. Um, I watched the behind the scenes of it a while back. They had like real animals on the set, so at Disney Zoo. And the animators were spending time, um, you know, getting the correct perspective, correct anatomy of the characters, because, you know, based on the real animals. So they did put a lot of effort into it. Um, But... It wasn't their saving grace like they were hoping for, so they had to make cheaper movies from then onward until the 50s. What I really like about it is they never show the villain of the film, which is man. They just simply credit him as man. Man is the reason why Danny's mom dies. Man is also the reason why there's a huge forest fire. You just see the results of what man does, and not necessarily man himself. And I think that's kind of poetic. And I... While I was doing research, I learned that the original ending was going to have um, the men dying in the fire as kind of like a poetic justice. But they decided to keep man out of it, you know, kind of like in Jaws. The less you see of the villain, the better it is. The more fear and the more terror in the, uh, you know, the example of Jaws, the better. Whereas for Bambi, it was better because... The audience already knew it was man, so it would kind of be like a little redundant to show man. It was basically saying, hey, they're talking about us. Was it a little tree-hugging? Um, no, I don't think so. I think they were just telling the story as it was. You know, I think it's kind of comparable to The Lion King. You know, this is just the circle of life in nature. That's just what nature is. Um, I don't think it was preachy at all. I haven't read the story of it, so I'm not entirely sure how the book portrays all of it. But, you know, from my understanding of it, it was more violent and and, uh, not kid-friendly. 
<laughs> um, but the movie, I don't think it was preaching. I think they were just trying to show what life is like in the forest. So I really appreciated that. I liked it. Now let's get into my actual critiques of it. Um, you know, I do praise it. I think the art of it is beautiful, as usual. Disney is very, very good at that. But I think Thumper, he's really annoying, especially as a little kid. You know, he's like brutally mean to Bambi for no reason. I mean, I get it. You know, kids are mean to each other. So in that aspect, it made sense why Thumper was so mean. Because, you know, little kids tend to be. But I just found him to be really annoying. And it's like, why are you so mean, Thumper? Bambi's literally a baby. <laughs> you know, kids are kids are brutal. Kids are mean sometimes. But, you know, they're friends. They're, they end up reconciling, I guess. They're fine. Um, any other critical points? <sighs> um, in the past, you know, I've talked about the pacing of the movies or the length of it. In this aspect, I think it was fine. Um, yeah, I, re I just, I think it was Thumper. I think Thumper was the thing I didn't like in it. Everything else I thought was fine. I don't flat out hate the movie. I think it's kind of hard to. But let me know. Like, what are your guys' thoughts on Bambi? I found a lot of people like it. I haven't found too many who don't. And if you really don't like it, let me know. I want to hear your opinion of it. Because... It can get a little tiring hearing the same argument over and over again. So, bottom line, um, I think Bambi's a good movie. I don't think it's Disney's best movie. I think, um, honestly, I think after Fantasia, this is kind of when Disney was in a dark time, mainly because of World War II and recovering from the Depression and a writer strike. There were a lot of reasons as to why Disney was struggling during this time. The next few Disney weeks, of course, I'm going to be discussing the next films in it, and none of them are going to be feature length. They're all pretty short, and uh, I personally don't like too many of them. I like one of them, but they're kind of uh, hit and miss. And uh, you can definitely tell Disney was struggling during this time. So I think Bambi was the last good story for a while. I say good. I think Bambi was the last solid story for a while, because um, everything after it, up until Cinderella, really was kind of hit and miss. So next time, I'll be discussing the next film for Streaming Through Cinema Week, and this time I'll have a special guest, my buddy Shane. Now, <clears throat> the movie we'll be discussing just came out last year, and it's a musical biopic about a famous rock singer of the 70s and 80s. And no, we're not going to be talking about Bohemian Rhapsody. We're going to be talking about the other film from this time. We're going to be discussing Rocket Man, the story of Elton John. Um, neither of us have seen it, so it's going to be interesting to see our opinions of it from a first-timer's point of view. Yeah, until next time, this has been Surfing Through Cinema with Hawaii Harry. Take care. Thank you for listening to Surfing Through Cinema. Make sure to check us out on Facebook at Surfing Through Cinema with Hawaii Harry and on Instagram with Surfing Through Cinema. We also have a website, www.anchor.fm forward slash surfing through cinema, where you can learn more details on upcoming episodes and on past episodes. We also want to let you know we're available on YouTube, so check us out Wednesday mornings at 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.